In this screencast, I will demonstrate how to make custom markers in Inkscape version 0.46. Markers are symbols such as arrowheads or circles or polygons or any other shape that can be placed on vertices or nodes that make up a path. I'll run down how they are placed on a path, then illustrate a couple of methods for making a new marker symbol. A typical use for markers might be in the creation of diagrams, among other things. Let's get started. All right, I'm going to grab my pen tool and I'm going to draw a path. Whoops. Let's select this node right here and delete it. All I want is a path with two nodes, a starting node and an ending node. Okay? Now I'll go to my fill and stroke dialog box and it's this section here that I want to focus on. This is the marker section in the stroke style. I'm going to add a starting marker, so I'm going to hit my pull down here. And you'll notice in here that Inkscape has a number of, of uh, markers to choose from. I'm going to choose this starting arrow. And I'm going to select an end marker, and I'm going to choose the ending arrow. Okay, now when I do that, you can see that I have a brand new arrowhead on the point of my marker. Okay, and that's basically how markers work. And those are great for, uh, like I said before, making diagrams or leaders or anything like that. Um, now, let's take, a, let's take a look at mid markers. Okay, mid markers are markers that can be placed on the, the vertices that are on a path. So right now we only have two. We have a starting and an ending. What if we had more? So let's go ahead and select this. I'll go to my node tool. I'll select both nodes and I'll add a node in between. Now I can place a mid marker and just for this example I'll place the arrow start marker and that'll put one anywhere that I have nodes here. Okay. Now that I have the mid marker set up, what I can do is select my node tool, select all my nodes, and add a couple more, and you'll see that markers will be automatically placed on any new nodes, just like we have here. Now I can take those, move them anywhere I want, And you see that my markers follow the end node. Okay, and that's basically how, how nodes work. Or I'm sorry, that's basically how markers work. Okay, markers just get placed anywhere on a path that you have a node. Okay, well now let's take a look at making custom nodes. Or I'm sorry, custom markers. I got nodes on the brain right now. Okay, let's say for example we wanted to just make... Um, a circle for a marker. So I'm going to go ahead and draw a circle. I'll just make this a perfect circle by holding the control key down. And we'll leave that red. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is keeping that highlighted, I'm going to go to my object, objects to marker, and I'm going to select that object. And you can see that the object disappears. Now I'm going to draw a new path. and I'm going to come here to our markers and I should see my new marker showing up and I didn't okay so let's try that again I'm going to I'm going to delete well actually I'm going to undo I'll grab this again and this time we'll go to objects to marker okay I'll draw my path okay and this time I've got it for some reason I don't know if it's a bug um, but you may have to do that once or twice to get the marker to show up in uh, Inkscape version 046, okay? So I do have the marker shown up here. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and place my marker, okay? So I'm going to have my starting marker here. And you see that I've my marker is now placed on my start point, okay? Now I can go ahead and add an ending marker same thing 
and I can go ahead and add mid markers if I wish to have my marker placed on every node. And what's cool about this is if you're making like a connected dot type thing, this would be a neat thing to use. So anywhere I put a, I move my node, my marker will follow. Okay, and that's how you make custom markers. Now I can do that with any shape, by the way. Okay, so if I delete this and say, for example, I want a star as a marker, I can make this a little bit smaller. I can select my star, go to object, object to marker, draw a path, and again, I didn't quite get my marker. That's still my other marker. So I'm going to undo, try this again, objects to marker, draw a path, and there we got the new marker. Again, I don't know if that's a bug or what's going on. There we go. Now I've got my star shape, and I can add the star as mid markers and I can add an ending star. Okay, and that's how that works. Okay, let's take another uh, look at adding custom markers, but let's say for example, we want to use a marker all the time, or we want to use the same marker every single time for multiple projects, and we don't want to have to go in and set up the marker. Well, we can add markers to our markers SVG file, so that way when we open up Inkscape, we've always got that marker handy for us. Uh, adding custom markers this way is very similar to the patterns uh, screencast that I made a while back. Uh, when you want to make custom patterns, for example, you can add a new pattern to the master patterns file uh, in Inkscape. That way when you open up Inkscape you'll have that pattern available. Well markers work the same way. So let's take a look at uh, setting up a marker uh, this way. But Before I begin, uh, what I need to do is draw a shape. So I'm gonna go ahead and we'll just draw a square for now and we'll zoom in on this and I can get rid of this and I'm gonna take this square that I've drawn and I'm gonna make it a object to path and I'm gonna select these two nodes and we'll add a node in between and I'm gonna delete these nodes here so I'm gonna make a shape just like this and we'll just bend this in a little bit okay so this is our new arrowhead okay and in order to make or, or in order to add this to our uh, markers master file I need to place the marker at this corner point of my page okay the marker it's important to understand that when a path gets added to a marker or a marker gets added to a path it gets placed on the markers center point okay so if I were to have a path here this marker will be snapped on to the marker center point. You can see my crosshairs right here. So that would be about somewhere right in here. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull some guides down. And I'll double click on this guide and make this 600. My document is set up for 600 or 800 by 600. I'll hit zero here and that basically puts markers right on this corner. Now what I'm going to do is go to file, document properties, we'll go to snap points and I'll select rotation center. That way when I move this my crosshair gets snapped right onto these guides. Okay. So now I'm going to hold my control key down and get rid of these guides because I don't need them anymore and we'll make this marker, we'll make this one blue. Okay, now what I'm going to do is select this marker and I'm going to first, before I do that, let's back up a step. Let me navigate to where our master marker file is, okay? 
So let me think here. It's going to be in, I'm on Ubuntu uh, 904. It's going to be in my uh, user share Inkscape markers directory. And you'll notice in there that I'll have just, or you'll have just one file called markers.svg. I've gone ahead and advanced and uh, copy and pasted a version of the original and just put an underscore there so I have a version of the original in case I mess something up I can always step back to what I had before okay so you want to make sure that your your markers get added to this markers SVG file okay so let's minimize that for now and what I'm going to do is now I'm going to open up uh, that markers SVG file Okay, and when you do, uh, it's basically a big SVG document, but if you open it up in a text viewer, you'll see the uh, XML elements on the inside. Okay, it's this section right here. These are markers. This is an example of a starting marker and an ending marker. Okay, you have a starting marker here, which it's called arrow start, and then you have an ending marker, which it's basically the same thing, except here they've rotated it 180 degrees. Well this section right here is what we want to add for our new marker. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this right here, both of these sections, I'm going to copy this, I'm going to hit enter a few times to get, give myself some space so I can see what I'm doing. And I'll go ahead and enter here, okay? So this is going to be our starting marker. This is going to be our ending marker. Okay, so let's minimize. Let's go back to our shape that we want to make a marker. And I'm going to highlight this. We're going to go to our uh, XML document viewer. And we can see the style here. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight the D attribute. And I'm going to copy everything. I'll open up my markers SVG and I'm going to find the D element here. Okay, now I'm going to carefully overwrite uh, this element with my new element. Our new properties, I guess. Maybe that's a better term. Okay, I'm going to go back to my Inkscape document. So we'll minimize this. I'm going to highlight the style attribute and I'm gonna copy its properties we'll open up our masters SVG file and we'll find the style property and we'll overwrite it with our style I'll do that for both of them okay where are you here style Okay, and I don't have a, a transform property here. Matter of fact, is that what it's called? Translate property. Ah, I don't have a translate property since I placed my object center point right on the corner of my page. Okay, if I have moved that off somewhere, then I would have a, a translate property but it doesn't matter. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to put my translate property to 0, 0 on both of them. That'll make sure that my object, its center point, gets added to the very end point of my path. Okay, now we're going to give this a new name. I'm going to give this, uh, we'll just say, we'll just call this new. Okay, so we'll change the ID property and we'll change the Inkscape stock ID property. We'll do that on both of them. Now this one's called start here, this one's called end. The end is exactly the same as the start, except that it's rotated 180 degrees. Okay, so we have a new start and we have a new end, and here 
I want to make sure that I have 180 degrees here and not here. Okay, so I'll go ahead and save this. We'll minimize that and we'll close Inkscape to restart uh, or to reload our master's marker file. So I'm going to go ahead and close out on this. And I'm going to open up Inkscape again. Okay, and let me resize that real quickly. There we go. Okay, now if I've done this correctly, now when I start a new path, I should have my marker already loaded in Inkscape. And here it is. Here's my new start and my new end. Okay, so I'll go ahead and select that. And I'll go ahead and select an end. And here are my markers. So if, uh, if you think you're going to be doing uh, lots of documents using the same marker, it might be advantageous to open up your markers.svg master file, add all the shapes and the symbols that you want to add to it. That way when you open up Inkscape for the first time, or every time you'll have those markers already in there. If you just need a new marker for a session, then I would suggest you go to Object, Objects to Marker. That was the first way of uh, getting a, a new marker in. You just want to be careful though, because as you add new markers, if you do that, I'm sorry, if you add new markers that aren't being used, if you go ahead and vacuum um, the defects or in the in the document um, you will lose those markers so you want to be very careful okay so that was basically our uh, screencast on uh, on making markers um, markers uh, I use markers a lot of times for just drawing leaders for example if I if I want to open up uh, a bitmap for example and I want to point to a certain section on the bitmap uh, maybe I want to draw a leader to it with some text off to the side explaining the area and uh, that's what these markers come in handy for they're, they're very uh, nice for drawing um, leaders and arrowheads basically but it doesn't have to stop there for example so we can select this and there are a lot of uh, options in here for markers and one of them that's kind of handy let me find it there is a scissors marker And we can give this a something about like that. Now I got this example from Tav on his uh, Inkscape manual site. Okay, and we can zoom in on this. And you can see the use of markers here. So if you were drawing something that required uh, somebody to cut the image out, um, this would be a neat little effect to add around it, so uh, showing that that's where you need to cut. So that's basically markers. So I, I hope that explained uh, the use, and uh, if you already knew about markers, well, that's, I don't know, maybe you found something handy in here, and if you didn't know anything about markers, then, you know, maybe you've learned something. So thank you for watching. I'm HeathenX.